call an aggregate stability test. Anybody know what an aggregate is? Mm -hmm. What do you think an aggregate is? Mixture of dirt and rocks. Mixture of dirt and rocks. You're heading in the right direction there. An aggregate is, is formed when soil particles are put together. Not only soil particles, but there could be residue or other parts of organic matter that have been taken and been put in together and protected. So this first test is going to take some land uses. This one is from this land use. These two are from this field here. Out of this field, uh, this is a, a no-till cropland field. Um, but there is a conventional treatment in that field as well uh, that we that we utilize to do some different projects. So we want to see because we want our soils to be pretty resilient because we have to, those uh, soils have to remain up. So we have to make sure that they can have and withstand the force of water. So what we'll do, let's get some, uh, some volunteers, please. I just need two volunteers. Jamie, you look like you're standing there, and Jeff, come on up. So take a look at this soil and just give me some thoughts on what you see here. In comparison, of course, these two in there, these two are even though they're in different colors, they're not very far apart. Um, yeah, Max are, but it's very brittle. Very brittle. Dusty. Dusty. Okay. What do you think about that one, Jamie? Yeah, pretty. I mean, it looks like packed hard too, but pretty fine yet. Yeah. So this one's actually a silt loam. This is a silt loam. This is a river. Uh, this one is located right on the river, so it's, it's low ground soils. Uh, have has inherent characteristics to remain wet through some parts of the growing season. While that one is just adjacent, it would be on a little terrace right above this one uh, called a Georgeville soil, it's a silty clay loam. Um, but look at this one. Let's see if you can see any difference between this one. Of course, there's going to be color. And actually, you may even notice a different color between the two that you have in your hand there, Jamie, and that one as well, of course. But look, do you see anything? That one's cloudier. It's cloudier? Yeah, that, yeah, that breakup is... Okay, do you see anything in that, that's in that soil or in that pit? It's got little holes in it. It's got little holes in it? Worms? Probably. It's got worms in it? Is that worm holes? It could very much be worm holes. Do we see that in any of the others? No. There's nothing there. <laughs> okay. So when you said that was cloddy, Jamie, when you're breaking it apart, it's, it's remaining in little parts, right? Mm -hmm. So what you have are aggregates, and if you can see, if you can look at this closely, you can actually see some little BBs that kind of looks like. Um, there's even deposits there in a the hole. Um, do you have any idea what that might be? Uh, they, they are aggregates, but you think, what do you think put them there? You said it just minute worms, ago, Jeff. Worms. Worms. It's actually earthworm poop. Uh, just, just so you, know, you know, your mom and dad said, they're never playing poop. Well, we're playing in earthworm poop today, so, but it's no big deal. Earthworms are good. We use them for fishing and all, so it's no problem. So I'm glad you made notice of that. So you can just drop that there. Oh, no, keep those in your hand. You just drop that. So what we want to do is place these in these in this uh, cylinders of water because we want to see what effect the water will have on these clods or these pits because we want it to be we want it to resist the force of water. So let's just drop those in at the same time. So immediately we are seeing something happen. We see air bubbles coming up on every one of these samples. So every one of these samples has pore space. And that water is trying to rush in and fill that pore space. So when we say that it's rushing in, I want you to tell me which one do you think, out of these three, or if all of them, which one do you think the water is infiltrating into successfully? Oh, it's, it's getting it's, into this one? And you see this one, it's doing the same thing. It's, it's not nearly as dramatic because of the color, but we can see that it is breaking apart. So you would say that the water is actively infiltrating into those. What about this one? Not, nothing's happening there. Very little, yeah. But we saw a bunch of air bubbles coming out, so air, air is being pushed out. So we would think that water is going in as well. Sponge. Interesting. Okay, so actually the water is trying to infiltrate into these, but the aggregates have no stability because there's a lot of disturbance in these systems. And I say a lot, these are like highly, highly disturbed systems um, and, and, and degraded soils. 
And I will say, as a disclaimer, this one has only undergone one year of intensive disturbance compared to this. So it just shows how fragile these systems are as well. But back to these aggregate stability. As the water is rushing in, filling those pore spaces, if the aggregates can resist that force of water and just let those pore spaces fill up, it can saturate that soil. It can go into those pores. You said there was some holes there, uh, different channels. You've seen the, the aggregates being formed. While these, through the high disturbance, those aggregates have been separated or destroyed. So these, these samples have basically went back into you know, sand, silt, and clay particles that have just been bound together when they were wet and then they dried out. So as water tries to fill that pore space, there's nothing there that has put those aggregates together because of the high disturbance. Same thing with this one. And it's just, it, like, again, it's, it's amazing how quickly and how fragile these systems are and how aggregate stability can be changed. So I want you to see, do you notice something different about the tops of the water on these samples? These are foamy? Yep. You have any idea what that foam might be? Okay, now these, all soils have biology in them. It's just what biology do they have and what population of biology do they have in, in, those in, in terms of numbers. So I commonly get accused of, well Nathan, you glued that together. You <laughs> took that foam, you put it in Elmer's glue, and you let it dry and you glue it together, so it's just sitting there. But the, you know, in, in a sense, that is correct. The problem is, is I didn't glue it together. Somebody did, but I didn't glue it. Anybody else have any ideas who did that? The worms over nature. The worms and other soil biology have glued this together in forming those aggregates. So when we look at these samples and we see this little froth on the top, that is actually the clues inside of the soil from that soil biology. So the soil is always in a, in a state of repair or trying to build its habitat. So let's think, the soil is not a medium, it's more of a habitat. 